If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to another quick little unboxing. Today we're gonna to be unboxing the premium battle deck set, which comes with two decks for a premium format, Pale Moon and Grand Blue featuring Harry and Night Rose. So it comes with this nice little storage case, which is pretty cool for both decks in general. Got our little designs on the sides here, Pale Moon and Grand Blue. The contents in the back, we got two fully complete decks with full 16 card G zones. This also comes with over triggers, comes with quick shields, it comes with pretty much everything you need, even Excel markers and uh, protect markers for both decks. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, get right into cutting this thing open. Tear that right off. Now flip the storage box open and Cobra at the back. Oh, these are really nice. Comes with little packs, which I'm assuming are going to be your markers in general. Those look like Excel markers and Protect markers in there. It also comes with uh, clan identity shields, which is nice. So quick shields for both. I think I got it. All right, so this is for the Pale Moon side. Got our quick shield marker. Oh, that's really cool. The Excel 1 markers are also... Oh, that's foil. This is kind of foil. You can barely tell. A little bit of a foiling on it. The rest look to be common markers. These are your Excel 1 markers and one foily Excel 2 marker. Excel 2 markers. Looks like the rest are also all commoned out. And, ooh, that is cool. So you got a going first marker. So there's a going first and going second card. And it looks like the going second card is going to be for the Grand Blue deck. Little, little thing on the side, just going to kind of open up the Grand Blue one just to see. Pretty sure it's going to be the same. So let's see, if maybe there might be a little hollow, extra little hollow in here. Quick shield, foil protect markers, common protect markers, foil protect two marker. And same thing, we got the common markers of the other one. And yep, there it is, the going second marker. What you're supposed to do is you put these face down and then you kind of shuffle them around and whoever picks which decides who goes first and goes second. So it's actually kind of cool. I like how they're incorporating this into the game. Put these aside and then jump right into opening up the decks in the rest of this packaging. Oh, there's something in the front here. Oh, wow, look at that. There's a little pushy pin marker things. Oh, that folds out too. So we got little markers for power, zero drive, boosting, etc. Little trigger markers there, over trigger marker. That's also really cool. hollow markers. Oh, that's really cool because for the mechanic for Night Rose. That's, that's honestly really nice that they package these as well. All right, putting that aside, comes with two play mats. These look like very basic wow there's nothing on the back side either it's just white very basic play mats yeah so it looks like it's got okay, your standard damage zone there your order zone the g zone is a giant cap on the side over there your right deck your trigger zone is just this is modern day vanguard right here people <laughs> look at all those zones the other mat should be exactly the same unless maybe it has like a red center marker nope it's also blue so both maps are exactly identical. Just do two very basic generic maps. Going back into this thing, little styrofoam piece in the middle is a divider. Got our two decks here, fully built out with G-Zone and all. We're gonna dig into those in just a bit and get all the little styrofoam out. And we got a perfectly good storage box for you to keep both decks in. So that's also really nice. Sidetracking just a moment. This is a really, really convenient product for maybe a couple of besties that want to buy in the Vanguard together and try out the game for premium. This is this is a great way to start. So, without further ado, pick which one I'm gonna open with. We started with Hell Moon, so we might as well uh, keep it consistent. I'm gonna slide this bad boy off. Oh, oh, they don't. They're just stuck together. Cool. So that's the G Zone. That's the main deck. So we're just gonna go right into the main deck first. Cool, starting off, Harry has a foil. This is the V-Series Harry, so it gives you an Excel marker. 
uh, when placed, choose an additional rear, and it becomes a stage, so that's the mechanic for this premium deck, is turning your Excel markers into stages. So they give you a full playset, Harry, which is really convenient. And then we get two copies of Starry Pop Dragon, which is the unit that's going to be on your stage, primary target there. And two other grade threes, one is also foil, so it looks like every card comes with one foil in this deck. So Tricky Assistant lets uh, you and your opponent put a card in soul, and then this gets power, and then also when it's wrote upon, you can call it to rear. Not, not, a, not a bad card to have, I guess. Uh, then we got four copies of the bird, Bullet Pigeon. This is where you can pick a Magia doll and uh, put in your soul. And uh, then at the end of the battle, they get attacked. You can return this to your hand and search your deck for a starry pop. So that way you can you know, call it to a stage and keep the consistency going. So I'm glad they gave you four of that. What's this? We got two Magia Dolls, Lunatech Dragons, I will retire from Guard Circle, put this into your soul, and place by ability of Harry, you can choose with one of your opponent's rear guards, and they put into their soul. It's a little bit of a control there. Ooh, this is a, not a V-Series card. This is an old card, Crescent Moon Juggler. So this is what we used to call Glimmer Breath clones. They uh, kind of less one, soul less one. When placed on rear, if you have Vanguard Harry, uh, soul charge one, choose a card from soul, call it. This gets 2k, and at the end of the turn, you put the called card back into your soul. So it helps you get a card out for the turn. To another really old card, uh, Dancing Princess Night Sky, kind of less one, when placed on banner rear. Search your deck for, if you have a Pale Moon Vanguard, search your deck. For a grade two or less pan loom, put it into your soul. So, really easy filter right there. Two uh, Magi doll, Cutie Paratroopers. I believe this is, yeah, this is the V series one. Uh, this is the one where when it's put on guard, put it into your soul, and when your Vanguard Harriness name is attacked, you put this in your soul and choose any number of your rear guards of Magi doll and move them to the Guardian Circle. So, another little defensive card there. Then we got. Three copies. Yeah, it looks like three copies of Mirror Master. Uh, when it's placed on the guard circle, it's a Magia doll. So when it's placed on the guard circle, you can put it into your soul. And if this is placed by the ability of Harry in its name, you can counter charge one. Two copies of Flying Parrington, the grade one, not the grade two. So this one is when retired from guard, from your soul, like all the other Magia dolls. When placed by the ability of Harry, you can draw a card. It's also not bad. Then we have four copies of the Masquerade Bunny. Uh, this is actually the old school Masquerade Bunny, but it's got the new art. So this is not the V-Series one. What this does is when it's placed, you can search your deck for a grade three Harry. And then if you added one to your hand, you discard a card. And while you're paying a cost for stride, you can get grade plus two. So it makes it easier to pay the cost for stride. So that's also really nice to throw into the deck, make it easier to search your Harrys. Four purple Trebezus, one foil. That's going to be really nice for people that want a fully foiled out trapezus if they don't have the promo one. So it's really simple. It's just when it's placed, you pick pick a rear guard, shove into your soul, pull something back out. As long as it doesn't have purple trapezus in its name, uh, it's just a really good Pale Moon card. It's been around forever. Uh, and then our starter. Wow. It's a foiled happiness collector. That looks really, really nice. So if you don't have your SP Pale Moon starter, this is a good alternative. That's really cool. All right. Then our over trigger doesn't come foil. That's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Galgamel, so it gives your Vanguard 10k and the crit for the rest of the game on top of 100 million. And then it does come with three heal guardians, which is cool. So, but they're not foiled. But hey, you got your heal guardian, so that's another uh, grade three you can reveal to Stride Fodder. You know, when you search out your Harrys. Then we got four PGs, which is really, really nice. So draw PGs, your Sentinels are all good to go. And then we got four copies of the Stride Crit. So this is the crit where when you want to pay the cost of Stride, you get to create plus three, so you can Stride with it. And lastly, we got three copies of a really old Stand Trigger, but this one is really, really good. This is GB1, put into your soul, or sorry, when this is put, uh, into your soul, you can put this on the top of your deck. Search your deck for the one card not named Girl Maryland and put it in your soul. So it just lets you search out any card when this is randomly soul charged, which is really nice. Or if you put it in on purpose. So th this is just a really good card to have reprinted, even though it's a 5k stand trigger. It's still decent. Alright, so that was it for the main deck. Now we're going to go on to the G zone. 
All right, starting off, we got two copies of Masquerade Master Harry. This uh, this used to be a promo, uh, which I don't remember if it got reprinted or not, but this is good to have back in circulation again. Has Magia. You choose a, uh, choose a copy of Masquerade Harry, turn it face up, choose two of your other circles and put them in your soul, so that counts lock units, which is really important. When this attacks, choose up to three cards from your soul, call them the separate rear, and at the end of the turn, you put them back in your soul. And then it has a continuous skill, all your rear guards with the Magi ability get 3k for each face-up card of Harry in your G-Zone. So, uh, only give you two copies. Four probably would have been nice, um, but maybe there's other Harry G-Units they have in there for the G-Zone. Um, nope, they gave us Mephisto instead. <laughs> maybe another two Harry would have been nice, but uh, we have Mephisto. So what Mephisto does, god, this card came out in like GBT06. That was like... 2017, 20, 2016. Uh, Magia, act. Choose a face down card from your G zone, turn it face up. This gets, during your turn, all your units get plus 1k for each face up Mephisto. And choose up the one card for yourself for every two cards in your G zone with the Magia ability and call it. Call the chosen cards to step rear, they get 5k. And at the end of the turn, you put them back into your soul. So a lot of carry effects are about calling things out for the turn, and then you put them, put them back right afterwards. We do have more Harrys. We have two copies of Dragon Masquerade Harry. Interesting that we have two. GB3, Count Boss 2, choose one of your rear guards between your soul. When it attacks, choose up to three from your soul, call them the separate rear. Then if you have five rear guards, your opponent chooses two cards from their rear guards and put them into their soul. And then, you know, the stuff that you called go back into your soul at the end of the turn. So it's still pretty decent. Mill Ward, Mill Ward's also really good. GB2. Soul plus one, choose face down G zone, choose two cards from soul, call them to rear, they get 4k, and put called units uh, at the end of the turn with this effect back in your soul. Choose the same number of cards as units, so as the number of face up cards as uh, Millward, and they get the red text when this hits. Choose up to one of your cards from your soul and call it to a rear with a unit. So it gives your rear guards on hit pressure, which is helpful. But it's for each face up copy of No Word. So you're probably going to flip No Word for its own cost. So we got a diverse G zone here. Ooh, Dark Side Princess and Yvette. So we're going to Dark Side Princess first. I believe this was a premium collection card. The unit of battle that attacked, turn a card from G zone face up, stride a G unit, and uh, with power and a Magia ability from your G zone onto your Vanguard circle, a stand, and it gets drive minus two. So this is where you do Dark Lord Princess into your Masquerade Harrys, um, and then you can call this to rear. And then for Yvette, Magia, when it attacks, you put a card from your hand to your soul, flip something in G zone face up, get an imaginary gift to excel, Call a card from your soul to the Excel, and it gets 15k, and at the end of that turn, you put it in your soul. So it's just another extender. So we have, it's a pretty good G-Zone to start off with if you're brand new. Oh, well, we got two more G-Units. What is this? Leontina? Leontina? Uh, when it attacks, count plus one, discard a card. Put all your rear guards in your soul. For each card from your soul, choose up to two cards from your soul. Call in the rear. If you called four or more different grades, when your opponent will call cards from hand to guard, then let's call it two more at a time. That's a really good card. <laughs> um, yeah. That's a really good card to throw into a G-Zone. A lot of options, for sure, for this deck. And uh, we only get four G-Guardians. It looks like uh, two of the same, one of each. One of these two. When this is placed on Guardian Circle, put one or more cards of it from your hand to your soul. This gets 10k to the end of battle for each card put. If two or more are put, your opponent chooses one of those stand rear guards and puts in your soul. So that's how you can uh, screw up your opponent's board. So this is some good uh, board control. Wandering Dragon lets you soul charge, choose a card from your soul, and call it to guard. That's pretty good because of all the Magia abilities. And then two copies of Poulter. Oh, this is the one where you have to flip uh, G Guard and face up. So you choose a face down G Guard, turn face up, gets 10k. And if there are four or more different grades in your soul, this gets 15k to the end of battle. It doesn't hurt, but having two copies of this is a little weird, meaning it kind of seems like you're just going to flip the other copy for its cost, but like we could have gotten another G Guardian out of that. But that's the G Zone. It's not a bad start, definitely could be modified, but uh, it's not. Terrible. It's not like trial deck level terrible. This is like an actual playable deck. Getting into the Grand Blue stuff. 
And I think the Grand Blue deck is what people were really, really, really excited about for this set. Flipping those apart. And we're going to start with the main deck. So we got our Night Roses. Oh, only two Night Rose. So unlike the Harry deck, we got two copies of Night Rose. Uh, Night Rose is when you rear good attacks or boosts, this gets 5k, retire that unit. And then when this attacks, choose a column, call it to two cards from your drop zone to that column, same column. If your opponent's Vanguard's greater or greater, this unit gets 10k and so in battle. This is pretty decent as a finisher, or if like maybe you're going first and you can't stride, you can go into this and do a little bit of some combos. But uh, because it doesn't really have like an on-place ability or like really anything to kind of warrant any defensiveness, I think having two copies of this makes sense. And then we got two copies of Skull Dragon. Nice little foil there for your Skull Dragons. Cannot be called uh, from hand normally. Um, and then during your turn, it gets 2k for each card you drop. And at the end of the battle that attack, you retire this unit. So this gets to be a big, beefy boy. And there she is. The best ride in this deck. Beatrice. This is great. You, you, you want to play Grand Blue and you want to play Premium? Boom. Beatrice, you got it. So what this does is when placed, Soul Blast 1, call a card not named Beatrice from your drop to rear. So you can ride this. And then you can stride her afterwards. All of your units with ghost unit names on your rear and guard get intercept and an extra shield and power. When your rear guard is retired by a card's ability during your turn, you count plus one. Call a card with ghost in its name, grade less than or equal to the card that was retired from your drop zone to a rear guard circle. What's really important about Beatrice is that first skill of when she's placed, it's van or rear. So that's just really, really good. Just a really versatile card. Beatrice is so good. Oh, nice. And they give you two night storms too. So this is a GB1 Nightstorm from set 6, GBT06. At the end of the battle, if this unit attacked the Vanguard, if it was hollowed, um, you can pay the cost. Choose a card not named Nightstorm from drop, call it, so it just extends. And also has the ability of when you write it, you can look at the top 5 for a hollow card and add it to your hand. People were running like 4 of this and 4 Night Rose like back in the day. Or 2 and two, 2 of this, 4 Night Rose, and 2 of some other card that like was just a big beater when you called it from drop. Nightstorm's been around for a while. Still a really good card. Oh cool, they give you two copies of Greed Shade. Maybe you want it at four. This seems like a card you'd want it for, but two is decent. During your turn, if your drop zone is ten or more cards, it gets 5k, and then when placed, discard a card from your hand, put two cards from the top of your deck in the drop, and return a card not named Greed Shade from the drop to your hand. So that's just any card. So you can mill two, grab any card from your drop, add it to Hand. That's I think it's just a really really good filter target. And then we got four V series Columbard. So when it's placed on banner rear, count us one, search your deck for up to one card, discard it, and then call it the one card from drop to rear. You can only use the uh, ability of this card once per turn. That makes sense. That's just a really good card. <laughs> just boom, play it, counter blast, grab anything you want, banner rear. Yeah. Glad that that's a playset. That's a really good card. Two copies of Stormride Ghost Ship. This is from hand, cannot be normally called. And when this attacks, this gets 15k. And at the end of the battle, you draw a card and retire this unit. So that's just a really good beat stick target. And what else we got? One, two. Two Skeleton Cannoneers to probably make some really good retire plays. And maybe if we have the uh, the right G guard, you can retire your opponent's rear guards during their turn, which is nice. What this does is when it's placed, Time plus one. Choose one of your opponent's barriers to retire it, and then the, if this unit is being hollowed, you can draw a card. Helps with board control, which is nice. It lets you draw some cards. Three copies of Sea Strolling Manchi. Yeah, it's just three. When placed on ban, search your deck for the one card, discard it. So it just helps you fill up your drop zone. At the end of battle, if this unit attacked or boosted on the rear guard circle, you may discard two cards from the top of your deck. Discarded one or more trigger units, you can retire this unit to draw a card, so helps you uh, get more targets and fill up your drop zone. Two copies of Negrobone, drop zone. Discard a card from your hand, put this in the bottom of your deck. Call a grade one from drop. If your drop is 10 or more, you can call any grade instead. So just more, more call targets and it's an act ability, so you know. Helps you just get whatever target you're looking for. Ooh, four copies. Interesting. We got four copies of Dancing Cutlass. What this does is act, drop, find another Dancing Cutlass from the drop, discard the top card of your deck, and you can call us to rear and you kind of charge one. The other Dancing Cutlass was like Soul Blast 2, draw one. So you can maybe mix and mash if you want to, but this is still pretty good. 
just to give you counter charge if you need counter blast for the turn. So I'm really glad they give you counter charge in this deck. Then we got our four strike fodder, just like with the masquerade bunny. So we got Tommy the Ghosty Brothers. It's the old school one, so it's got five shield. Reveal a grade three, search your deck for Night Rose. Then you discard a card if you add Night Rose to your hand. And then also while you're striding, this gets grade plus two for the cost of strike. So, um, don't know if that's gonna be as helpful, but you know, just to keep both decks consistent. And then our foily Grenache. I'm gonna Rotopon get a quick shield if you're going second. And also draw. And triggers, plus favor. It's the one that lets you do one of each trigger. Not foiled, but still an over trigger. Four of our kill guardians. Four of our draw PGs. This is also a ghosty, really important. Um, so it's a stride crit, but it's a ghosty, so that means it's gonna get more shield to Beatrice. It's also, when you stride with it, it you know counts as a grade three. And then three copies of Nick the Ghosty. It's also a ghosty, that's really important. Has hollow, and when this is placed on rear from drop, if it's hollowed, you can choose a 20 of the units, it gets 10k, and then this unit gets, when this is put into the drop zone from rear, you put it back in the deck and you shuffle your deck. Yeah, it just recycles your triggers, gives you its 10k, and it's a ghosty, so you can search it out with your uh, Beatrice. All right, so that was our main deck. Really, really consistent deck overall. And on to the G zone. Starting off, two copies of Twilight Night Rose. Cavalas. Choose a same copy, Twilight Night Rose, turn a face up. Choose up to the number of cards in your drop zone. This is the number of cards facing G zone. Plus one, call them a step where rear is hollowed. If you call three or more cards, this gets a crit. Um, seems like this would be a really good early game card, but can be a late game finisher. End of, all, end of your, or sorry, at the beginning of your battle phase, choose one of your units for each Night Rose uh, in its name in your drop zone, and they get power plus 5k. So that helps, you know, with the two Night Roses you got in your main deck. Maybe uh, you might be able to use those as strike fodder and then make this go off. Two copies of Jumble Dragon. When it's placed on ban, put the four cards from the top of your deck drop. This unit gets 5k for each normal unit. If two or more triggers are put, choose a card from your drop, call to rear. Um, this is a really, really simple G unit. I feel like this is going to be one of the first ones you replace when you upgrade this. Oh, there he is. Big Obadiah. This is a really good card. So what Big Obadiah does is kind of boss one. Uh, turn a card from your G zone face up. Search your deck for up to five cards, put them in drop. Choose the two cards from drop, call in the rear, and they get 5k. That's just a really, really good set of cards. This is pretty much going to be your go-to first stride, I feel like, most of the time. And then we got Ghosty King Obadiah. We got two of these. Uh, this is one placed on band. Search your deck for up to three cards, put them in drop, shuffle your deck, and make two or more cards the hollow ability you put in the drop. Choose up to one normal unit with Ghosty in its name from drop, call to rear in the same column as this unit. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Keep all the, the Ghosty support. You know, we got some Beatrice support in here for Ghosty, so I feel like it makes sense to run Obadiah in this. And we got two copies of uh, Pirate King Night Rose, so this Night Rose lets you multi-attack. It's auto, kind of last two, choose a face down card of same card, name, turn it face up. When this attacks, a Vanguard. Choose two cards from your drop zone, call in the rear, separate rear in different rows. So uh, basically you're calling to the same column, essentially, <laughs> just to kind of get an extended attack. So um, yeah, it's not bad. It's just another uh, multi-attacker. It was good when it first came out. Uh, we got one copy of Bartholomew. When this attacks, counter boss one. Choose up to three cards, different names from the drop, call them in the rear, and those called cards get 5k. If your drop has 30 or more cards, when your opponent would call cards from their hand to the guard circle, they have to call three or more at a time. So uh, filter fast so you can go into this and win the game. And we got one copy. Bad Bounty. At the end of the battle, they attack. Count plus one. Just part of three cards from your hand. Put this in your G zone face up, and you can ride one grade three from your drop. This stand. So this lets you go ahead and ride Beatrice. Beatrice lets you call something from drop. And you get two more attacks, which is really cool. For our G Guardians, we got uh, Negronora, which is choosing a face down G Guardian and turning it face up. When it's placed on Guard Circle, if you do choose two different cards of different grades in your drop, and you can call them the Guard Circle. So this is where you can call Skeleton Cannoneer, which is nice. 
Then we got one copy of Oriana. When placed on guard circle, count plus one. And the attacking unit gets crit minus one to the end of battle for every 10 cards in your drop. So that's just a good way to negate an attack. And then we have two copies of Negro Lily. Count plus one. Um, choose one of your rear guards and retire it. When it's placed on guard, choose up the one normally with Ghost Unit saying for your drop, call it to rear, and this gets plus 10k shield. So it's a good way to, you know, fuel up your ghosties. So let's actually real quick do a ghosty count, because now I'm really curious. We got ghosty count. There are three mix, four chads, but our Tommy brothers. It looks like those are all of our ghosties. Uh, and then we have our Beatrice for, you know, support. So not a lot of ghosties in this deck, but at least you have Tommy, which is a ghostie, so it can play off of that. But your the other ghosties seem to be just the triggers, which is really interesting. I would have thought that they would have put more main deck ghosty support. But uh, yeah, oh well. This is still a decent start to get you into premium. I think both of these decks are very valid in their ability to perform well for a player that might be new to the format. So I think if you're really interested in picking up either of these decks based on their playstyles, um, just because you know you watch the anime, the G the G series anime, and you want to get a premium for, you know, Luna and Oms, you know, character developments, if that's what you want to call them. Uh, these are actually just really, really good decks to get started. So these aren't like trial decks where you pick them up and then you have to replace like 75% of the deck. These are actually fully fledged, fully ready to go premium decks that I feel like when, you know, when you're piloting them really well and you know what you're doing, these can have a lot of consistent wins. Um, these are not broken per se. I would say maybe the Night Rose deck or the Beatrice deck has a little bit more oomph to it in terms of consistency, um, but they're, they're both really good. So that was it for the unboxing for the premium battle deck set. Um, hopefully we'll get some games in with these in the near future. And um, looking forward to showing you guys that in the near future. So hopefully we can get some games with these decks going forward and show you guys what they play like. And let us know which one you're looking forward to picking up uh, and how you're feeling about these premium battle deck sets and what other uh, decks you'd want to see get remade in the premium battle deck sets in the future. I'm thinking maybe it'd be cool to see um, like uh, a Blade Master or a Gridora version of these premium decks getting rebuilt. Something of the sort. Something from like a G era. Alright, that was it. Have a good night. Bye.